Now, the first detailed report on the state of wastewater treatment in South Africa was released after nine years, and it's painting a very bad picture about the state that we are in. The Green Drop Program looks at how to improve the overall performance of wastewater treatment plants, and it's revealed an alarming state of affairs in the country's wastewater treatment plants. Let's bring in Kevin Winter from UCT's Future Water Institute to unpack this further. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Kevin, maybe just furnish us with some of the most salient v uh, features that came out of this long-awaited report. Yes, good afternoon. And of course, we are pleased that the report has been released because it, it gives us the kind of data to understand what's going on. And, and there's no inability to be able to hold government accountable uh, and others accountable for the situation. The salient points probably are a general collapse in that we're moving in the wrong direction. There's about 30% of our 900 or more wastewater treatment plants, particularly at the municipal level, that are failing badly, not only in their discharge of water quality, but in failing in the infrastructure, in the ability to monitor that infrastructure, and in the personnel who are operating those systems. So indeed, it's serious. And not only is there critical failure of that third of that 900, so 334 to be exact, are reported as being dysfunctional, but we've actually gone the wrong direction further in that almost 70% of our wastewater treatment plants have moved from an area of risk to severe risk. And in those last uh, years since 2013, report was released. Mm. Why are we seeing the degeneration of the infrastructure as well as the quality of water that is coming through uh, people's taps across different parts of uh, the country? Why are our plants in this state? Well, there are a number of reasons, and I think one of those is that many of the plants that exist are still on fairly old technology. Uh, they were built and designed for the input that was current at the time, sometimes 30 or 40 years ago. They have not been upgraded, and they're not able to manage some of the, what I might call, modern contaminants that are finding their way uh, into a toilet and a sewer system and are asked to be treated by a technology that's 30 or 40 years old in some cases. So that's the first thing. Secondly, is I, I think we really are le losing our younger generation who has seen the opportunities for benefiting and for shaping their careers uh, in the wastewater and water sector in general. And then thirdly, and this report that you've just held, I mean, I'm absolutely devastated by the recent report this released this weekend on 65 officials from the Department of Water and Sanitation who've been fingered uh, for corruption or mismanagement either way. But the story is, is almost fictional uh, in terms of the state at which our government and governance of water is going on in the country. So there's three quick ideas, and it may explain uh, the overall general trend that is one of deterioration. Mm. If South Africa does not take care of this pressing issue as a matter of urgency, um, what could potentially happen in the country when it comes uh, to water? Well, I really am referring in the green drop to water quality. And if our water quality continues to deteriorate, there are two major things that are going to happen. One is that we are collapsing at a great speed right now, our ability for nature, for ecological services to treat water. And if we lose nature as that critical factor, uh, we will start to see uh, contamination of our food sources, both in terms of what's on the land, but also in the marine and freshwater environment. So that's serious. This is a food security issue, among other things. And then secondly, I think we're also unaware of some of these new compounds that are finding their way through drugs and pharmaceuticals and others into our waterways. And at some later stage, we are trying to treat that water, and it's really expensive to do that. So what we can see inevitably, a collapse of nature and also much more expense involved in trying to clean that water, even if we are able to with the current technologies that we have around. So expense is going to be a key factor here. 
No, that's absolutely true. And I just want to hold on to that point in terms of the costs associated uh, to the refurbishment and to the maintenance of this infrastructure so that we don't get to the point where we are having uh, poor quality drinking water. Um, I mean, just maybe give us a broad sense of what those costs would look like. And I'm thinking that it's not a task that government could take on on its own. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good, good point indeed in terms of there is a need to have and strengthen the partnerships between the private sector uh, and government, but also with citizens as well. Uh, the, the Department of Water and Sanitation have given a, a global look at the, what their cost might be, and it's probably around about 8 billion rand that's required to refurbish the current uh, wastewater treatment plants across the country. I, I think you could double that. Uh, I mean, disturbingly, by the way, and in your report just before I came on board here uh, with this interview, is that about six, 36 billion has been lost through mismanagement within the Department of Water and Sanitation and or corruption, whatever it might be. Mm. So in a sense, we are, we've lost our, the game here and our ability to reinvest uh, is, is becoming harder and harder to do. 8 billion rand might see it through, but it's going to take uh, a considerable amount of effort to be able to uh, spend that money in the correct way and to make sure that it starts to improve uh, these wastewater treatment systems. And, and we have to do it. And I think let me just also be on a more positive note here too. You know, we've in this country have been through some major crises. We've learned how to deal with those crises over the decades. And here's another one, which I believe is a national crisis. And we've got to put our heads together and start in f to, and to find ways in which we can address that crisis. And, and we can do it. There's no doubt we can do it, but it needs political will and it will need that partnership you referred to earlier on. It can't be done by government alone. No, absolutely. And this is going to be very important for us to achieve because it's also been indicated that um, climate change is also going to be having an impact on the quality of water. Indeed. And the moment we start to see warming of temperatures, and I'm here in the Western Cape, for instance, and we can see how there is this linear uh, upscaling of temperature uh, that's becoming increasingly warmer. The more warmer a earth becomes, the warmer the body of water becomes, and we start to lose oxygen from that water, mm. and we start to see other contaminants begin to behave differently. And so climate change is, is a serious one, not only in terms of the lack of rainfall and warming temperatures, but when you get episodic rainfall, like we've just had in KZN, this incredible storm, then our sewage systems can't cope. And you now start sending a whole lot of water down into a wastewater treatment plant, and it is also unable to cope with that um, uh, larger volume of water. So there are some serious issues, and we've got to treat climate change seriously now, and I think there's a wake-up call of what happened uh, in KZN. No, absolutely. Thank you very much, Kevin Winter from UCT's Future Water Institute, talking about uh, wastewater plants in the country and what needs to be done to refurbish them uh, so that we can preserve the quality of water that we currently have.